The Captain Cook Memorial Fountain, clearly saying that Captain Cook's dead. <laughs> um, I have a problem with that name because it doesn't respect the site. I see no connection between the fountain and Captain Cook. I see far more connection between the artist and the land, particularly with the water, because this is where we come from the fact that this site, the whole of Civic Park, was a wetland. But I think everyone would accept and value this as one of the most iconic elements of the city. The sculpture and the fountain came about through a commission competition in 1957 and took a number of years to complete. Newcastle are very lucky to get someone like the Hinders. They won the competition. So Margell and Frank Hinder were one of the power couples of Australian art. Margell was an innovator, along with her husband, but in her own right, a fully independent, groundbreaking, modernist sculptor. She has other major works, including the Reserve Bank in Martin Place, and you can actually see the, the family connection between that Reserve Bank sculpture and the fountain. The fountain in Civic Park is basically made up of two components. It's obviously the sculpture, which is the fountain, but then everything else that Brian Suter's designed around that, again from a modernist perspective, but using quality materials of granites, creating a beautiful reflection pond. That piece of water, that still water in front of that fountain, is just that, like the activity and the calmness creates beauty, as does the plantings that are planted differently every year. Working with artists like Frank and Marcel Hino it was a fantastic learning curve for me because the design becomes the all-important thing. They don't have to worry too much about whether it's going to fulfil a function other than be a beautiful object. When the water's off, it stands alone as a beautiful piece of art. But once that water goes on, it becomes a sculptural fountain. So there's this real genius of engineering that have gone into the jets. And this idea that water itself, that is so fluid and tangible, actually has structure and form. The water elements were like sticks of ivory. It had white light. We had a wind gauge in the beginning. Well, when the winds come up, they, they distort. So the hinders didn't want the fountain operating during windy conditions because the sculpture was sort of disturbed. So we put in this anemometer. Then we had the problem that the public came along to see it and the, and the water wasn't going, so they complained. So in the end, they emasculated the anemometer and uh, it goes in all weathers. The overall cost was about 70 to 80,000 pounds of which the sculpt probably got about 20,000. And uh, it was a gift in Newcastle. Even the Boilermakers were paid more than Margell at the time in the 60s. And I think that says something about what it was like to be a female artist in the 60s. Imagine being a young girl and seeing a female sculptor there with a welding gun. Like, oh my God, what an incredibly symbolic thing to be seeing. So I wonder how influential that's been to potential generations of artists. I remember the night that the fountain was finally turned on. I was only 10, but my family had been following the controversy with great interest. The fountain attracted so many awful comments about a pile of junk and sent them back to Sydney and what a rip off. There were many who were waiting to laugh and poke fun at the council's stupidity. And so the night arrived and then the lights were turned down, so it was very dark, apart from the lights on the fountain itself. And the switches were turned and you heard rumbling of the pumps and then the arcing water jets came over and the fountain was revealed in its beauty. And as that happened, there was a collective sigh of delight from the crowd. Ah, oh. and then applause. And that was the sound of a community falling in love. Not just falling in love with a fountain, but falling in love with itself and having confidence that finally in Newcastle we had something that we could really be proud of. 
It was Margel's design and vision, and along with Brian Suter's, of course, that beautiful fusion of architecture, design, sculpture and art. Well, Brian Suter's has been recognised as a freeman of the city of Newcastle, and that's for his overwhelming lifelong contribution to architecture here in Newcastle, whether it be involved in the Civic Fountain, City Hall, our City Administration Centre, which is now a five-star hotel. It has been a life's work uh, for Brian, and we recognise that contribution, and it's really been quite phenomenal.